All right, Point Nation, I know a lot of you guys use craft paint to save money and to really start out cheaply doing acrylic pour. And if you've noticed at the store, there's lots of different types of these craft paints. So I have purchased three of the same color of the matte paint, the gloss acrylic paint, and the satin acrylic paint. And we're gonna do a test to see how each one of them works. And I'm gonna do some tests for how they work together. Now, one thing to note, especially on this CraftSmart paint, if it doesn't have any label on it, if it just says CraftSmart, um, at least on the CraftSmart line, then this is matte paint. Some of the labels do say matte paint, but I did confirm on their website and with the employees at uh, Michael's where I got these that these are essentially are the same paint. If it doesn't say anything, it's matte paint. And these are the cheapest. The gloss is the second cheapest and the Satin is the most expensive. These are, you know, around 79 cents to a dollar, dollar fifty, dollar seventy-nine, or dollar twenty, dollar fifty, and these are more like dollar seventy-nine, dollar ninety-nine. So here's the satin, and it is by far the smoothest of any of these. This is the gloss, and it is the thickest. You can see the texture of me just pouring it down in there is still sitting there. By far the thickest. The mat looks dull and a little bit gritty, which I'd expect from a matte medium, but it's just interesting to see. All right, so another interesting thing I found, I have the satin paint here, and I'm gonna look at the blue in all of these. It is pretty thin. This is 50%, 50% the satin paint and 50% of my white glue from Craftsmart, which is 70% glue, 30% water. Now look at the gloss. This is super thick, super thick. And then the matte, again, it's pretty thin, although I think the, the satin might be thinner. Yeah, the satin does look slightly thinner. So same mixture and right out of the gate, the gloss is the thickest, the matte is the second thickest, and the satin is the thinnest. All right, and you know I like to do some uh, tests where it's as even as possible. So what I'm gonna do is put three stripes of each color down and then put three stripes of each color and texture down so that each one overlays each one of the other ones. Right, so the only real oddity I see here is look at that white satin and even the sea breeze is allowing the other colors to merge into them. See, it's happening on the sea breeze here just a little bit. It's happening a ton with the white and it's not happening at all with the blue by itself, but the white does does do it, and I, I guess I shouldn't say that. It's happening just a little bit here. You can kind of see a halo uh, right here. But then you see that same halo for the satin. Sorry, for the gloss and the satin. So that is very interesting. I don't see a lot of paint falling into the other paint. Um, if I had to make a guess, I would think one of the lighter paints is the uh, satin blue and probably this matte blue also is lighter just because it's coming to the top more. But uh, otherwise, that satin just has some odd effects for multiples of the colors. And just for fun, we're going to turn this into its own little painting. The matte side, the cells popped up way earlier than anywhere else, but I am starting to get a few cells on this side. And again, this is glue, so I was not expecting many cells at all, but I'm still getting them with this paint, which is kind of nice. 
that's probably due to the fact that they don't have really nice pigments and therefore are all a little less dense so they can move up through each other uh, with a little bit of heat on the top. All right, so now we're just gonna prepare each of these cups the same. And the white on the mat is really dropping, which means it's the thickest. But these two covered the dark blue and this isn't dropping at all, which is not the thickest, densest. So it's very interesting. The white seems to be better for this. So now we're just going to do a, a straight pour with a little bit of wave is really what I'm gonna do for each one of these. Very interesting how different all of those were. This is more white, this is more of the sea breeze, and this is more of the navy blue. So we've given them all a torch, and now we are going to top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left. Everyone. All right, so let's, let's look at these all separately. This is the satin and the white. This is what I don't like about craft paint. It tends to break up the white, which is why one of the reasons why I recommend not using uh, white like this. I did get some really pretty um, layering on the outside here, which I did like, and a couple of cells, my green, really disappeared. I don't see that hardly at all anymore. So here's the gloss. I think this one looks the best. The white held up the best. And that's not abnormal because the gloss, to make it glossy, you have to really put a, an additive that is generally sticky or uh, more sticky, which helps keep the white from separating as much. I did get some kind of phantom cells down in here and then a couple of other cells, but this one looks the best, at least for me of these. The white really took over the mat. And I got a ton of cells. I was not expecting cells, but I got a ton of cells for in this mat. And then you can see a little bit here what we were seeing with the other color where the color is kind of bleeding into each other. See how it's kind of bleeding in there? I can see that on a couple of the other layers, but white really, really took over there, which means I was, because the white was sinking, I was expecting it to, um, to sink in here, but the problem was it all sunk to the bottom before I poured it out. So in the end, there was just so much white on the bottom. So. My recommendation is still only use craft paint if you're practicing or you really just can't afford any other. If you're going to use the craft paint, it looks like the, the gloss is gonna be the best option, unless you wanna create some cells and then potentially uh, get the slightly cheaper version, maybe use one uh, color of the matte, not white. And if you really wanna save money with your acrylic pours, I recommend you watch this video where I break down the cost per ounce of multiple different mixtures of paint, including craft paint, which paint mixture costs the most, spoiler alert, it's water and paint, and which costs the least.